Welcome, Fed Cap family, to another Financial Friday series. I'm Keith Reed, the supervisor for Work Readiness Instruction at the Poe Grand Concourse location. And today we're going to discuss something that I definitely believe is important. It's uh, probably not the sexiest part of your research when you do when you do your research for mutual funds or on mutual funds that you plan to invest in. But it's an important activity toward knowing where best to place your money and place your bet as far as an investment is concerned because it certainly is a bet you win sometimes you lose sometimes right so the name of this series today is called reviewing annual mutual fund reports sounds boring actually it is kind of boring but i don't want to discourage you simply because it's boring from pursuing the knowledge and the information i think is critical to you making the right decision for your investment and the right decision for your portfolio's future growth. So fund, uh, funds, mutual funds issue annual reports every year. And usually they discuss how well the fund is doing, uh, where the fund is investing your money. For example, if you decided to invest in an international fund, a fund that invests in corporations that are incorporated in Europe or Africa, Asia, or South America even, if you decide to invest, so sometimes you'll find, most times you'll find in a annual report, a mutual funds annual report, uh, how well that fund is doing or not so well that fund is doing from in an international fund situation. So, for example, if you are investing, say, in Shearson, uh, a, a large German pharmaceutical company, right? It's uh, a pretty solid company. Uh, it's been around a long time, but it's not an American incorporated corporation. It's a German and a corporated corporation. So if the fund is investing in a company like that, you can find out uh, how well those stocks in that fund are performing in that particular sector. Uh, also, you'll find in an annual report what's called the chairman's letter to all of you who are shareholders in that fund. Now, the chairman's letter is designed to give you a nice picture of, and I, it should be designed also to give you an honest picture of how well the fund has done over the past year. But here's the tricky part, and we'll get to trick talk, tricky talk in a moment. An annual report is only a snapshot of how well the fund has done in the last year. So that would be since 2019. Right? But I've been saying for weeks now, and I mean close to 20 weeks that we've been doing the Financial Friday series, that investing in mutual fund is a long-term endeavor, not a short-term endeavor. So although under federal and some state regulations, mutual funds are required to produce an annual report, it is just that. It's an annual report. It is not a report that reflects an amalgam of many, 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 many years um, of how the fund is performing. And in fact, it doesn't have to. It can just, it will often say, the fund performed 2.53% better this October, say, right? This October 2020, as opposed to how it performed in October of 2019. That's okay. Um, it's done. It's doing exactly what it says it's supposed to do. It's an annual mutual fund report that it puts out every year for its customers to be able to review and for you to ask questions. Now, the tricky talk that you find in the chairman's letter often is how rosy the fund is doing. So let's do a little a little background. Mutual funds have benchmarks or uh, if we use sports talk, statistics, how, you know, in basketball, how many assists, how many points per game, right? How many block shots per game? Those are benchmarks. How many points per game did this player perform at last season? How many block shots? How well did he or she perform on defense 
compared to this year compared to last year. And they'll use those statistics to determine how much money they may want to pay that player when the time comes for the contract to be renewed. So those are the benchmarks, points per game, block shots per game, how many field goals per game, uh, free throws per game uh, after being fouled. Those are the kinds of things that they, in basketball talk, those are the kinds of statistics that they use to determine how effective a player has been this year compared to last year when it comes time to talk for a new contract. Well, mutual funds have benchmarks and stats that they follow as well. They will say that this mutual fund in this area compared to all other mutual funds just like it in this area, this mutual fund did 2.5% better than all the rest uh, in this area this year. And they'll use that. Right. And they'll say, well, uh, certain sectors in the fund perform better than maybe other sectors. But essentially what I want you to come away with understanding is that there are benchmarks. They call them benchmarks. Right. Statistics that they use to determine how well the fund is using. And usually in a chairman's letter, he or she will talk about, well, uh, we expected the fund to perform at least at 1.75% better this year than it did the year before. And if, he, if the fund performed at 2.53%, then they're going to talk big time and in rosy ways about how well the fund performed. That's not the case usually, ladies and gentlemen, when, they, when the fund doesn't perform at the expected levels where it's supposed to year over year. And usually what the uh, chairman will say in his letter is that, well, uh, due to a downturn in the overall economy and the market, the fund didn't perform this year as it. And they'll give you a whole host of reasons why your, form, your fund that you're investing in, and the word is underperformed. Why it underperformed the benchmarks? The benchmarks are here, so why did it perform here and stiff the benchmarks are here instead of here? That's what they'll say. So usually, I want you to understand that when you read and what you're reading and what you're looking for and listening for as you read, right? These are the things that you see in an annual report on a mutual fund, the annual mutual fund report that comes out uh, every year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brief moment to just read a supposedly well-written uh, chairman's report to you straight from a report. All right. So I'm going to read to you a letter to the from the chairman of the Wellington Fund, a Vanguard Wellington Fund. So, dear shareholder, for the fiscal year ended November 30, 2015, Vanguard Wellington Fund returned about one percent. The fund finished behind its benchmark, the Wellington Fund Composite Index but ahead of the average return of his peers. See, so here we go. He's already laying it out for you that the fund didn't perform. It didn't meet the benchmark, which is here. It performed down here, right? And he's already beginning to do the, not the trick talk, but sort of move you in the direction of, however, the Wellington Fund did still perform better than all the rest, right? Your fund made up of two parts, I'm going to continue to reading it and quote, your fund is made up of two parts, an equity portfolio, equity meaning stocks, ownership in corporations through the purchase of stocks. The mutual fund buys stocks in corporations, which means the mutual fund and you as a shareholder, by way of that shareholder ownership, uh, you own parts of the company as well, shares in the company as well and a fixed income portfolio. The equity fixed income portfolio are usually corporate and or U.S. government bonds. Fixed income means bonds. There are two types of bonds, corporate and government. We know of the government one because we've all heard of U.S. Treasury bills. So that's a, that's a fixed income uh, document. Right. The equity portfolio, which accounts for about 65% of the assets, 
all of the assets, meaning cash in the fund, right? Which accounts for 65% of the assets, lagged its benchmark. Ah, so in this particular Wellington, Vanguard Wellington fund, for the year reporting, November 30th, 2015, the fund performed below expectations. The part of the fund, now we're talking about the equity part because it's split into two pieces, right? The equity part, the part that owns stocks in corporations didn't perform that well. However, and it lagged its benchmark. The benchmark is the Standard & Poor's 500 Index. So the Standard & Poor's 500 Index is the benchmark. If you don't operate, if a fund is not operating at the Standard & Poor's 500 Index, that is the measuring stick. That's the ruler. The Standard & Poor's 500 Index is the measuring tool of how well a fund is. That's what you use to measure how well a fund is doing. So a fund has to come up to that and perform either at that or above that. The stocks in the information technology and the financial and healthcare sectors were the fund's top contributors. Holdings and consumer discretionary fund hurt performance relative to the index. In other words, in the financial sector, the healthcare sector, and the information technology sector, all of those stocks that the fund purchased in those industries, healthcare, information technology, and the financial sector, perform poorly. And this is what you'll find in an annual report, right? However, the holdings, however, the Wellington Fund's index portfolio, which accounts for about 35% of the assets, cash in the fund, outpaced its benchmark, which means that all of the money used in the fund to buy corporate bonds or government bonds, that is the part of the fund that did very well, and that's the part of the fund that the, the chairman's letter is reporting on to all of you who are shareholders. It's letting all of you out there who are shareholders know that Although the equity side, ownership side, right, stock ownership portion didn't do well or didn't perform at the benchmark level, however, the income section did perform at a level better than anticipated, closing out the year November 30, 2015. So a good annual report is supposed to be an, and should be an educational and it should be an honest document. And part of the chairman's letter is to explain everything about how well the fund or not so well the fund performed in the past year, right? So one of the things that we want you to do here at FedCap on coming out of the Financial Friday series is, begin to, is to begin to understand, to read the reports, look for the reports before you invest. But if you're already investing, you definitely want to get your hands on the annual report that comes from the chairman's office or the CEO's office to give you an idea of how well your fund is performing, right? This is central to understanding the complete process of investing in mutual funds. This is not something you can kind of say, oh, well, you know, I invest in it and I don't really read the reports. No. We want you here at FEC have to come away understanding and knowing you should read the annual report. Not just how well the fund has performed over 90 days, six months, or, or a year, right? So if you've been in the fund three or four, say five years, I like that number, right? If you've been in the fund five years, then you can take five years worth of reports and look at them in the amalgam and say, well, you know, this fund really hasn't been performing at the benchmark set by the fund itself. The fund managers themselves set these benchmarks and they expect in the year coming up to perform at or better than the benchmark. And you should too as an investor. So I just wanted to come away with giving you an idea of how important it is to read the annual report. It's a very important document. Not just your statement you get in the mail every time you send in a payment or you make a contribution to the fund. 
You have to read beyond just the statement you get, because that's just a quick snapshot of what happened with really within the last 30 days. You want to read your annual reports, get in the habit, right? So according to this lesson today is about getting you to understand, get in the habit of reviewing the annual mutual fund report that's produced, and they have to do this by law, right? They have to produce an annual report and some of them even produce a biannual report. In other words, they produce one every six months. If you can get your hands on that, that's fine too. The more the merrier, the more information, the better, right? And it gives you an opportunity to compare apples to apples. In other words, if you have a fund that is a tech fund, then you get a chance to look at all how you get, you, you can, you can, doing your downtime research how your fund, which invests in techs, high tech stuff, right, stocks, how well your fund is doing in comparison to other funds also investing in the high tech sector. All right. So again, I'm Keith Reed. I'm the supervisor for work readiness instruction here at the FedCap Poe Grand Car Course location in the Bronx. And today's lesson is reviewing annual mutual fund reports and how important it is, I believe, for you to do that as you become an investor in mutual funds, not only for your investment purposes, but for investing in your retirement future as well. It's all important. None of this stuff is, well, I can read it if I want to. No, make sure you get in the habit, develop the habit of reading these kinds of reports because they're produced for a reason. They're not just produced to, to waste paper. They're produced for a reason. They're produced for you, the consumer, to consume the information and use it and to help you make a solid and sound decision about investing your hard-earned money in non-retirement as well as retirement assets. All right. So again, I hope this helps you. If you have any questions whatsoever regarding our Financial Friday series, you can always contact me at kreid, that's k-reid, R-E-I-D, at fedcap.org, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you would email me, right? And I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have regarding our Financial Friday series. Okay, so thank you again, and I want you all to have a great day.